Well, how do the jump? So I'm back inside of No Man's Sky. I'm back at this portal where I've got just a little base computer that I've stuck down. Not even built a base. But now I need to have a look to see if I can find myself a decent planet to do my light no sky activities on. Now inside of this system, I don't believe there's a lush planet amongst all of these. Unless that one's a lush planet. So anyway, let's um jump in, into my ship. Let's go into the discoveries and catalogue. And let's hit up the materials and items. Under here I want to then hit on plants. And then I want to select star bulb. I want to find a planet that's got star bulb on. Star bulb or star bramble planets are also known as lush or paradisey type planets. So there we go. It says launch into space and scan the planets for life. So there is one inside of this system. If there wasn't it would have said go to the galactic map and check. Let's have a look then. Let's see if there is actually a star bulb one here then. That's a breached planet so it's not that one. The others look like swamp planets to me so I'm a little bit miffed to be honest. Okay let's head on over here and let's see if we've got one here. So it might point you to another system or something like that. Let's scan that one behind the ring. And there we go. Now you can see there it is a paradise planet but it's got magnetized ferrite in the list. Magnetized ferrite, anything that says mag mag magnetized or if it says activated, means that it's got a high probability of storms. Now, because I'm in creative mode, it won't tell me how aggressive the sentinels are, which is a massive thing for this sort of thing to work. So let's head on down to this planet and have a look just how light no sky esque it is. I'm hoping it might have flying creatures as well. When I say flying creatures, I mean ones that you can tame and mount. And uh, this planet itself looks like it has got water on. Has it got vast oceans? Maybe not. I don't really want one that's got massive swathes of ocean. Just in case my flying creatures won't take me across it. And I also don't really want a uh, lush planet that hasn't got any trees. This one doesn't appear to have any trees. And it also appears to have a really rugged gnarly terrain that would be a right pain to navigate then again i have got a flying creature but there's no there's there's no um there's no trees on here so i'll just show you another way of, of finding a lush planet so all i'm gonna do is go to the galactic map and i'm just gonna randomly jump system now i would like to find one that maybe is in a corvac system there's a corvac system right next door you can see there that it says that this system has got water and you can see a holographic projection of all the planets. So there's one, two, three, four planets. And one of those planets, the ringed planet, looks like it may have two moons. Let's just jump in and let's have a look-see. So you get an idea of what you're getting yourself into before you jump. The more planets, the more chance of finding a lush planet amongst them. Right, well I've arrived, okay, Ed. And that one looks like a star. That one in front of me looks like it might be a frost planet. But you can kind of tell from a mile off. Yes, it's definitely a frost planet. Let's spin this around then. That one looks like it might be either a fungal or radioactive. Let's have a look. Gamma root. Yeah, radioactive. You got this little marble down here. That looks like it could be dead. Yeah, metallic moon. That's obviously a, the frost planet. It's hardly even worth scanning that one. That's obvious. Let's go around here. Let's see what's on the opposite side of here. That one looks like it might be another dead planet. Um, it's not letting me scan it yet. It might have a storm. It, these two might be in storm phase. Well, we'll have a look. Yeah, cactus. Activated copper, so it's got a storm. radioactive moon okay so there's nothing in this system that's all that great now if i had a further jump range i would have been inclined to a farm here you go let's hit star bramble let's just hope it doesn't find me the system that i just jumped from okay hold on i just abandoned that you know what let's jump away from here slightly let's go oh i can't go too far because of my warp range look at it it's terrible Oh, let's, let's come back out of here. Let, let's just see if it does give me a new planet. Okay, there we go.
it's given me this one, which is that where I just came from? I don't know whether it is or isn't. And where my base is is where... No, it's found me another one in close proximity. All right, we go there then. Sweet. I guess. I don't think it's a Viking system. Doesn't matter though. Right, well, I've arrived, Akated. Now, Ominous Gaunt has actually sent me over a portal address for a lush planet that they've found that they say looks very light no sky. Oh, well, there we go. I found one just over there. It's Bountiful, Star Bulb. Let's go there and have a look. So if this isn't a very good planet, then I can always up and go over to a portal where that base is and hit up Ominous Gaunt's planet. However, I would like to find my own. We'll see if we get lucky on this one. If we don't, we'll use Ominous Gaunt's. Okay, now something that I'm liking about the look of this planet already is I don't think it's got too much water, if any. And also it's quite a small planet, so traversal might be quite good. Also, it means that there might be... Oh, it has got water, actually, but just not a shed load. But it might mean that all the buildings are closer together on the landmass, which might make it an interesting planet to actually go around. Let's just hope it's not covered in mountains, because this looks... It looks hilly, but it doesn't look mountainous. In fact, this looks quite interesting. When it, when it comes to terrain, this actually looks pretty darn cool. I mean, in Light No Fire, they have got big mountains. I mean, I'd say this is hilly, not mountainous. Kind of. It's a bit hilly, it's a bit mountainy. It's a bit cool, actually, isn't it? Well, let's set down and let's have a better look at this marble. Let's see if this is worth doing a quest on. Let's have a look, see if we can find a building. Uh, was it just... Did it just spot something? Oh, wow, look at this big flat plateau that I've just found down here. Oh, this is epic. There we go, there's a building or something over here. We're land by whatever this is. I don't think it's anything too interesting. I don't know what that is. It's just a safe beacon in the middle of nowhere. All right, fine, we'll land there. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like this quite a lot, actually. Largest planet. It looked quite small from where I was earlier. All right, OK, fine. Well, you can see these giant mountains around me. This is pretty darn freaking lovely, isn't it? OK, I just need to get rid of that log item. There's eight creatures on this planet. All right, we'll get rid of that abandoned search. And let's see what sort of creatures frequent this world. Please be beetles or butterflies. That would be that would make my day. I mean, it doesn't only matter if they haven't, because I've shown you how to get your own beetles and stuff like that. Oh, it's got T-Rexes. They might be aggressive. If I put this onto survival mode, that might add quite a fun element. OK. Well, I've got quite a few dog creatures here. Little antelopes. This is looking pretty nice. We've got some damaged machinery in eyeball range. You know what? This 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 might do for a planet for me, people. All right. OK. Brilliant. OK, well, I guess the next step then. Let's just go and stick this into survival mode just for us. Just for a brief moment. And let's see what happens. Because sometimes you get sentinels just spawn onto your location and start shooting you. Okay, some planets just do that. See what I mean? Extreme Sentinel planet. Yeah, I did wonder. I did wonder, people. No, don't get me. I'm I'm innocent. Okay, right. <laughs> we put that back to creative then, so they can't kill me. And now it's triggered a it's triggered an error now. So I'm going to jump in my ship, out of my ship. It, this, this is kind of a known bug, really. And I'm just going to do a reload, OK? And um, hopefully, when I come back into game, it's not going to have that bug there. But now I know that that planet is an extreme sentinel planet. Um, I think we're just going to go and hit up Ominous Gra Gaunt's planet, people. So I'll head back over to that portal. And we put in the portal code. And we'll go and have a look at what Ominous found, shall we? Right, chums, well, I'm back at that portal where I was earlier. Let's go and hit on up a code. 
And we're going to be putting in the code that Omnus God has found. So he found that quite a lovely planet. So there's no sentinels there. And there's trees. So that's good enough for me. We want a pigeon. A Sunday set. And a beetle. And a box with a brick in it. Next for Flux Capacitor. A TP or Wigwam. A Rocketer. Followed by a Dragon Fly. Last four. Box with a brick in it. And a pigeon. And a double whirly mentwirly black hole. Okay. So thank you, Ominous Gaunt, for this code. There you go. Chicka bum bum. Chicka pow pow. And it's activated. Let's, um, let's head on in, shall we? Yes. I'm walking sideways like a crab. Oh, chums, I am drinking a lovely beverage. A 07's brew, Captain's Tea. Yes, in one of my merch mugs. This is my actual brew of tea. Yes, you can buy this on cherizina.co.uk. I'll put details on the screen, I guess. Right. It's rather scrum dillyumptious. Yeah, here we go. And we've arrived, and we can see there. Yeah, discovered by Ominous Gaunt. Thank you, friend. Smallest planet. Oh, perfect. That's perfect of what I needed. Lovely. Well, let's go and find a place to put a base, shall we? And then what I'll do is rather than flick it into survival mode, just put it into creative mode. When you do put it into survival mode, there is a good chance that you're going to get sentinels come after you. But normally it's only if you shoot at them. The only thing is, it does up all sentinel aggressiveness in survival mode. Okay, I'm just looking for a little base that's just south of the portal. So I know that if I head north, directly north from this little base that I'm going to put down here, I should come across the portal again. Perfect. All right, lovely. Also, if I do need a portal at any stage, I have got that other little base marker that I set down before. There we go, let's stick this here then. And let's go and claim this as a base. Lovely jobs. And claim base. Papa chow! Out of body experience! Up through the clouds, up through the atmosphere, up where the air is clear. Sika pow pow! Done! Righto. Yeah, I'm gonna stick this in. Oh, hold on. It has got flying creatures on this planet that you can tame. Oh, sweet! Okay, let's uh, let's feed one of them. We're going to have him as a pet as well, people. Yes! Okay, I'm going to ride him. It's like a little elephant creature. Look at him. He's freaking beautiful. Oh, oh, yes. I mean, he's quite slow. His turning circle is quite good, though. Oh, look at me go. Majestically flying through the airs. I can feel the breeze in my horns. Yes, horns. I said horns. Yes, cool. Okay, right, there we are. This planet has got flying creatures. Not the best of flying creature, but it has got flyers, which is more than I expected. Okay, right. I need to go and harvest a load of materials so I can build my base, which is going to take... I'm going to spend maybe, I don't know, an hour or so just gathering resources. I'm going to get a load of carbon. I'm also going to use my terrain manipulator and just dig a massive hole in the ground. To get a load of silicate powder so I can use brick. Make that as big as possible. Boom. To the centre of the earth I go. I go. I mean, that's going to get me shed loads of brick. Well, silicate powder. After you finish digging your hole... All you do is you go to restore mode like this and step back a bit. And it should, should, freaking restore. Restore you git. Come on. There we are. It's been a bit finicky. Restore, restore, restore. There we go. Don't really want a massive hole where I'm digging my base. And there we go. Done. Okay, cool. So that's now got me a shed load of that stuff. Did I actually go in? I didn't even change my mode to normal mode, did I? All right, there we go, normal mode. And now I need to harvest... Okay, there's a sentinel right there, look. He's looking at me rather suspiciously. What are you going to harvest, Captain of the Steves? He's saying to himself. Okay, well, I'm going to go over here. I'll zap this hazardous flora. Take that hazardous plant of evil. 
yeah, have that oxygen. And now I'm just going to go and get myself a load of carbon as well. So, yeah, trees equal carbon. Take that tree. It says I've un unidentified it. Might as well scan it. Okay, so now I'm on this planet. One of my main objectives, one of my main goals, is if you hit this exploration guide, you want to try and max this. Now, once you hit this sort of like precedent, sometimes they change and they go up a number. But for now, I've got to get 24 plants, nine creatures, and I've got to analyze 16 minerals. That's kind of my first objective on this planet, but it's going to be an ambient objective. I'm going to show you how you get more objectives later. But for now, I'm just going to scan a load of trees, scan a load of bushes, and then I'm going to burn them to a crisp so I get a load of carbon, people. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next, like, 10, 20 minutes. You go do whatever you want to do for 10, 20 minutes. Go make yourself a lovely cup of tea. But it's not as nice as this one. No, because you haven't got the captain's brew. Or you might have, and then you're, you're just awesome and cool if you have. Okay, right, see you in a bit. People, people, I really like this planet. Look, it's orange where I'm standing, but you can see over there, look, there's patches of, like, blue. But as you get to the blue grass, it sort of shifts and moves. It's... It's really bizarre and lovely. Look, it's all going orange now that I'm getting there. But this is epic. I love this planet. Nice find, ominous god. Yes. Okay, right, anyway. I've got enough now to put down some basics. So stone-wise, I can put down 59 of these after digging that massive hole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a base that's sort of just jorting out over this lovely canyon of trees. Right, now I am going to put like a little side hustle on this edge of here. And that's going to be where I put my teleporter, I think. Yes, I did say teleporter, people. I want a teleporter so I can go get some maps daily when I'm playing solo, you know. And then at the end here, I would like to have some windows. Because I, I would love to have a lovely view. Now I have to make glass. Now to make glass with that silicate powder inside a refiner... I should be able to make glass. So here we go. That's a... Actually, can I just make it inside of my... Uh, I think I can just craft it in here, can't I? Glass. There's glass right there. Okay, it's not letting me do it with frost crystal. Fine. Um, right, so I might have to make a metal plating. Dang it, I didn't get any ferrite dust, people. All right, bear with me. Okay, so I'm just zapping some rocks to get some ferrite dust. There we go. Lovely, lovely ferrite dust. And now I should be able to craft myself a metal plating. Why not? What? Did I? Oh, it's dang it! It's bloody pure ferrite. When you don't, what? I jowl. Get all right. There we go. Normal ferrite dust. Let's just get these ones in. Ferrite dust. Lovely. Okay. Now I should be able to get a metal plating. Third time, bloody lucky. And now I should be able to craft myself, hopefully, a portable refiner. Let's see. Chicka pow, chicka boom. Yes! Then the portable refiner, if I power it with a little bit of carbon. Get a little bit of this. No, I don't want too much. I can make myself five glass. There we go. Lovely, jubbly. Oh, okay, that's only really going to give me one glass, actually, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to need a lot more silicate powder, people. All right. Now, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could just build your base. And since it's solo mode and you're not affecting anyone but yourself, you could, if you really want to, go your put yourself into um, creative mode and build whatever you like. I mean, I'm still going to keep it quite small and in keeping with the light, no fire type theme, if you know what I mean. OK, so I'm going to have a little window there. And I want another window there. And I can't really be asked to craft all this stuff. So, you know, what? I'm going to stick it in creative mode. I'm going to make my base in creative mode. You do as you like in yours. Cool, yeah. Right, oh, chum. So I've put it back into normal mode. I've completed my making my my, my base. I will show you around. As you can see, it's got a little chimney there. Looks like a little face from here, doesn't it? Almost looks like the gib emoji of Sean Murray's. Anyway, let's head in through this lovely door. Boom. We've got a bar here with a nutrient processor. I've got a, some carbon racks here. And I have to 
bio, use my bio furnace. I'm going to have to grab the carbon from here to stick it in there to then charge everything up. Power. But hiding behind this wall is a base terminus so I can teleport up to the station, which it, it, you'll find out why I need to be able to get to the station fairly soon, people. And then over behind this wall, I've actually got a, um, a storage container. There we go. It's quite hard to interact with. Uh, it pops up every now and again. There we are. There it is there. There's my storage container behind that wall. It's actually easier to interact with outside. I've got a couple of cases in here, so I can interact with those. Get a couple of ion batteries, a few other bits and bobs. But these are the main thing that I want. Ah, I haven't got an Atlas Pass level one, have I? Let's see if I can craft a Kate and Atlas Pass. Or else they're a little bit redundant, aren't they? Oh, dang it. By the looks of things, I can't... I haven't got the blueprint for a um, an Atlas Pass level one. Oh, dear. Well, um, that sort of scuppered me. In my, oh, no, hold on. Let's go over to here. All technologies. No, I definitely haven't got the Atlas Pass level one. So we're going to have to find some buildings before I can actually use those, which is probably a good thing because they are going to give me navigational data, which is going to help me get myself a couple of charts. Now, I have got one navigational data over here anyway, so I can get myself one map. But there we go. That's pretty darn cool. All right, well, we're going to have to try and get ourselves an Atlas Pass 1. Hopefully that's going to be my first mission, so at least I can open these and hopefully get more navigational data. Well, there we are. I've got a little table out here as well. A little bed over here. Very nice. A little sitting place in front of my fire. And some more can canisters out there. I think it looks quite lovely. What do you think, my little elephant-faced friend? Yeah, he seems quite happy. Look at this view. It's lovely, isn't it? It'd be nice if there were some ponds or some lakes there, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers and all that lot. Anyway, next, we're going to have to hit up some missions, aren't we, people? So, I've got one navigational data on me, which is probably going to be enough, perhaps. And I've also got a couple of charts anyway. I've got three alien charts that I could use, so I could try and find a relic site. Um, but yeah, let's let's go to the station. Let's see if there's any more navigational datas on the station that I can take advantage of for my first mission. So here we go. Space stations. Oh, it's previous system. Doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm going to be using the, the actual terminus to come back to this base anyway. It doesn't matter. Okay, well, I've arrived, decoded. Up at the old space station. And now I'm going to have a little look around. See if I can find any navigational data. Now the first place to look is up on this mezzanine, right over at the back here, and then this rack. Here we go, boom. Oh, we've got, we've got units credited to me on that one. Okay, well you should find some more racks like that laying about like here. I got more units, dang it. I want the navigational data, dang you. Okay. Right, it's a couple of multi-tools there as well, peeps. Let's have a look. What about this one? Nope, can't interact with that. I don't think I'm going to spot... Oh, there, look, there's a little orange cube on top of this one. Let's have that. Well, we got one navigational data. That's going to have to do us then. So I've got two navigational datas. Now, I would like to find a secure facility that I can break into and hopefully get the blueprint for the Atlas Pass Level 1. OK, so let's see if we can get that then. Exchange for specific charts. And I'm going to go for the secure facility. There you go, secure sites. I'm going to get two of those. I can't have three. I can only have two. Boom. So that's going to be my first day's worth of missions is that, pretty much. Okay, well, let's um, let's just head back down to the planet then. I mean, there's ways and means of getting navigational data on the planet. You can find these little save beacons all over the planet. Hopefully hit them up and uh, get yourself some navigational data. I mean, we're going to be heading off using my actual flying creature anyway. And I'm sure we're going to come across loads of points of interest and loads of navigational data. We don't have to rely on those red cylinders I've put in my little house. OK, so I'm back at home. And you know what, people? What I might do is just hit up a save. Now that I've got those charts. And we'll start doing the missions next episode. So this episode was finding the perfect planet. And also putting down your base. So there we go, people. I think we've about covered all bases with that one. So I'm going to say goodbye of my in-game self. There we go. Cheery bye of my in-game self. And uh, people inside the viewers, I'm hoping you're liking this little mini-series. I thought I'd put it together just in case people wanted to do quests in a no, light no-sky 
light no fire type fashion now i'm hoping that you're going to be playing along at home trying this little game mode at least if we do fire back up season two myself cynical and ricey you can jump straight over perhaps with this save you might just have to nerf a couple of bits out to baseline yourself a little but other than that you should be fresh to go you know what i mean and you've already got the title you've already got your character you already know what faction you want to be aligned to so it should make things nice and easy for when we start season two and you'd even have a couple of flying pets and they're ready to actually lay eggs and give to other players so you're going to be more useful anyway till next time goodbye goodbye and goodbye again